What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to take a look at sequences. So here's a nice definition to copy down. And the notation for sequences, we usually go with subscripts. So we'll say a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, all the way down to a sub n. But let's take a look at a few examples. Now the first kind of example I want to look at is when we want to list the first few terms of a sequence. So let's list the first five terms of this sequence a sub n equals n squared minus 1. So the first term we're going to call a sub 1. And that's just going to be 1 squared minus 1. We're just plugging in n equals 1 for the first term. And that tells us our first term is 0. And now if we want to find our second term, we just plug in n equals 2. And we're going to have 2 squared minus 1, which is going to give us 4 minus 1, which is 3. And then we're going to have a sub 3 is equal to 3 squared minus 1. And then 9 minus 1 is equal to 8. So we'll go on to find the fourth term. And we're just plugging in n equals 4 now. So we have 4 squared minus 1. And 16 minus 1 is 15. And now for the fifth term, we're just plugging in n equals 5. And we've got 5 squared minus 1. And this is going to give us 24. And now the last thing we're going to do here is find the hundredth term. So we have a sub 100. And if we plug in 100, we have 100 squared minus 1. And this is going to be 1 times 1 with four zeros. So that's going to be 10,000 minus 1, which is going to be 9,999. So let's do the same thing we just did before. So for the second question here, let's look at the sequence. We'll call this one b sub n equals n over n plus 1. So we're going to find the first five terms in the hundredth term. So b sub 1, we just plug in n equals 1. We're going to have 1 over 1 plus 1 is equal to a half. And then b sub 2, if we plug in 2, we're going to have 2 over 2 plus 1 which is equal to 2 thirds. And with these questions, sometimes you can notice the pattern right away. And the pattern that I see right away is that the numerator and the denominator are just increasing by one each time. So without thinking too much, I know the numerator is gonna become three and the denominator is gonna increase by one and become four. But if we plug in n equals three, that's gonna give us the same result. So then b sub four, if we plug in four, we're gonna have four fifths because we're gonna have four over four plus one. And then for the fifth term, we're going to have 5 over 5 plus 1, which is going to give us 5 sixths. But now for the hundredth term of the sequence, we're plugging in n equals 100. So that's just going to give us 100 over 100 plus 1, which is 101. So here are the terms of the sequence b sub n. So I want to look at another question just like this. And once again, we're going to be finding the first five terms of the sequence, and then we're going to find the hundredth term. So what we got here this time around, we're going to have negative 1 to the n over 2 to the n. So this is a special type of sequence. This one is what we call an alternating sequence, which you're going to see why in a moment. And for something like this, we're going to have negative 1 to the n equals 1 over 2 to the n equals 1. And this is going to work out to negative 1 over 2. And then when we get to the second term, when we plug in n equals 2, we have negative 1 squared over 2 squared. And negative 1 to the second power is positive 1 over 2 squared is positive 4. So this is an alternating sequence because each time the sign is going to switch from negative to positive and then back to negative, And this would go on forever. So the third term of the sequence here, if we have negative 1 to the third over 2 to the third. This is going to be equal to negative 1 over 8. And you might start to notice the trend here that for this question, each time the next term is found by just multiplying the previous one by negative 1 half. And there's a really nice property in algebra that anytime I have something like, let's say, a to the c power over b to the c power, that I could turn this into a single fraction, a over b, and raise that whole thing to the c power. So we could use this idea for c sub n, and we could rewrite this as just negative one half in parentheses to the n power. And then you could just see that negative one half to the first is negative a half. Negative one half squared is positive one fourth. And then to the third power would give you this. So then for the fourth power, negative one half to the fourth power is going to switch back to positive, And we'll have two to the fourth power is 16. And if we do this once more, multiply by negative half again, one over 16 times another negative one half is negative one over 32. But the last thing we want to do is find the 100th term. So we'll just do that here in this section. The 100th term, if we actually write this out, is going to be negative one to the hundred over 2 to the 100th power. Now, this is going to be a giant number, so I'm just going to simplify this. Negative 1 to the 100 
is equal to positive one because this power, we have to pay attention to the fact that it's even. So this is gonna work out to just one over two to the 100th power. So that's gonna be the value for C sub 100. So for the next set of questions, we wanna go the other way around. We're gonna start with the list of numbers and we wanna write the general term. We wanna write the nth term here. So notice if I call this, uh, this first term A sub one, and we call this term here A sub two, we'll call this one A sub three, and this one A sub four, the whole game here is to look for the pattern. And the first thing that jumps out at me for this first question is that we have all odd numbers across the top and we have all even numbers across the bottom. So when we're coming up with our nth term, the even numbers on bottom, I could describe by just saying two times n, because you can notice my subscript here is one. If I do two times one, that gives me a denominator of two. And when I do two times two, that gives me the denominator of four and then so on for the rest. But the one idea to pay attention to is that the numerator is exactly one less than whatever's in the denominator. So on top, I could say two times n minus one. And this is always gonna be odd because it's an even number minus one. And it's gonna be exactly one less than each of these denominators. So if we plug in one, see we get two times one minus one is one. If we plug in n equals two, we have four minus one is three. At n equals three, we have six minus one is five. And all these terms here will check out. So for the fifth question here, I wanna look at another sequence. We're gonna have this list of numbers. We have negative two, we have four, we have negative eight, positive 16, negative 32, and this pattern will continue. And this is gonna be our first term, so we'll call this a sub one. We'll call this term here a sub two. And I'll just label the rest of these according to their placement in the list. So here we just look for a pattern. And the first thing that I notice is that to get from this term to this term, I have to multiply by negative two. And then if I multiply by negative two again, it's gonna bring me to negative eight. So the pattern here is that we have to multiply by negative two. So what that tells us is that our nth term, we're just gonna have negative two to a certain power here. And we can just go ahead and say negative two to the n power. Because notice if I let n equal one for this subscript, I would have negative two to the first is negative two. And then when I have n equals two, I have negative two to the second, which is positive four. So this is gonna be the sequence for the nth term to describe this whole list of numbers. So this specific type of sequence has a special name. This is a geometric sequence when all you're doing is multiplying by the same thing each time to go from one to the next. So for the last question here, I wanna look at something a little bit insane. So let's say for question six, the first term will just be square root two, but then we'll have a bigger radical and we'll have two radical two under this big radical. And then I'll extend the radical and this time around we'll have three twos under there following the same pattern. So we'll have square root two times square root two times square root two under the same radical like this. And now this time there's three of them and then we'll have four of them. So we'll just continue this pattern like this. All right, and I'm just gonna write one more and then we'll throw in our dot, dot, dot at the end. But now we're gonna have five of them. So we write our two, we write a bigger radical and then this just continues like this. Okay, and we wanna come up with a formula for the nth term here. And the trick is we're just gonna rewrite this in power over root form with a rational exponent. So the first one here is gonna be two to the one half. But then I'm gonna rewrite this. This is gonna be, we're gonna have square root of two times two to the one half power. And if we simplify this a bit, so we'll just drag this down. This is gonna be square root of, and I'm gonna have two to the first times two to the half. So if I add these, that's gonna be one and a half or three over two. And then what I'm gonna have next is two to the half times two to the three halves, and that outside radical we could write as parentheses to the one half. So now in this case, I'd have to multiply these exponents together. And that would tell me the next term in my list is two to the three fourths power. So we'll continue this pattern here. And notice we already did the work for this square root two, square root two piece. So notice right underneath here, I have square root of two, but the square root two, square root two piece, like this part here trailing at the end is exactly equal to the thing I just wrote down here. So this is gonna be the same thing as square root two times two to the three fourths power. So once again, we already found that square root two, square root two is two to the three fourths. So I'm just substituting for this piece that's trailing at the end so that I don't have to keep doing that whole process that we did the first time around. So now we just work this out and we're gonna have two 
to the, and this is going to be one plus three fourths. So if I do four over four plus three over four, that's going to be seven fourths. And now this is going to work out to two to the seven fourths, all raised to the one half power when we get rid of this radical. And when we multiply these exponents together, this is going to give us two to the seven eighths power. And you might see the pattern by now, but if we do one more of these, I think it's going to be definitely very obvious. So now we're going to have square root of two times, but now pay attention to this trailing piece. We have square root of two times, and then we have square root two times square root two times square root two. There's three of them here, which is exactly equal to the one we just found before. See, this one has three twos underneath the big radical like this. So this is really just the same thing as two times what we got here, two to the seven eighths power. And if we call this two to the first power in ed, eight over eight plus seven over eight is the same thing as two to the 15 over eight. And if we rewrite this, we're gonna have two to the 15 over eight all raised to the one half power. And now this is gonna work out to two to the 15 over 16. But by now, we should start to see the trend. Notice the power of two. We have a denominator of two, four, eight, 16. So the next denominator is gonna be 32. And the numerator is exactly one less than what we have in the denominator. So this next numerator here is gonna be 31. So now we just have to pay very close attention to this pattern here. Notice this was our first term. This is our second term. This is our third term. And then we have our fourth and our fifth term here. So we wanna come up with a formula for our nth term. Well, all of them have a base of two, but then we just have to pay attention to each of these exponents. And notice the denominator of the exponent is simply two to the n power. Because notice if I plug in n equals one, two to the first is one. This is two to the second power, two to the third power, two to the fourth, and two to the fifth. And the numerator is exactly one less than the denominator. So then I just have to rewrite the denominator and put a minus one. So our a sub n here, the nth term of our sequence can be found using this formula. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on sequences. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.